define the business models um, in terms of assessing the impact on the organization. So we're going to look at three dimensions. Steve already started to talk about the strategy in terms of understanding your strength and then exploit it. Operations would highlight which areas within the organization that you need to, to pay special attention for, um, you know, d depending on the various models that you use. And finally, what would impact on the organization. So to start with, strategy. Yeah, well, having worked in and around work, uh, retail strategy for, for 20 years, a, a, a wise old uh, strategist said to me, um, you, you can only really focus on one or two of the key propositional levers as a retailer. And, and, and back uh, uh, in the day, it was range, price, um, convenience or service, the location, and, and the theater that you bring. So you used to be able to choose one or two of those and used to max out on one or two of those, and that would make a very successful retail business. Um, and, and you, you, but the cost made it difficult to do more than the one or two of those. So uh, a good example would be Hamleys in London. Hamleys is a fantastic toy store. It's got a lot of theatre and it's got great range. But you couldn't put Hamleys in every town in England because it wouldn't be cost effective. Um, I, used to, I used to work for B&Q and when B&Q were very successful back 10, 15 years ago, more successful than they are now, they, they opened these big destination 200,000 square foot stores. They had the biggest range in, in the country, but, but they, didn't, they weren't able to, to put them everywhere in every location to make them convenient because you can't open sort of uh, 1,000, uh, 200,000 square foot stores in the country because they're not cost effective. <coughs> so you used to be able to focus on one or two of these. And I think technology has changed all of that and, and e-commerce in particular. So you can absolutely have a good go at all five of these now in a, in a B2C model. So you can have the widest range because you only hold it in a central location. You can have cheaper prices because you don't have store rents and you have a different operating model. Um, you can be convenient to customers because you can link in with third parties and, and use their pickup points without having a store network. Um, and, and that also covers off the location point. And you can have the best content in the world. So a, a, a startup can have as, be, as good content as, as B&Q because it's digital content that it holds centrally and once it's created, it lasts forever. So, so the e-commerce businesses have chipped away at these old retail models where you can only focus on one or two strategic propositional levers. But I think it doesn't stop there. In future, you'll be taking those, those sort of five levers and maxing out on them and pushing them into these other super channels um, like marketplace, share platform. Um, so so I, I think that the, the strategic sort of uh, courses that people were teaching about retail sort of 10, 15 years ago, that's massively changed. And now it's all about maxing out on pretty much every channel and every propositional strategy. So that was the strategy. If we now look at the, um, the impact on business processes. So depends on which of these models you will, you will adopt, you will have additional stress or pressure in, in terms of certain activities. Take Marketplace as an example. So you can see in Marketplace, so we, you know, we, we put one diamond for B2C just as, uh, as a reference, and then where we believe you know, there will be additional pressure or stress, we, we put two, um, two diamonds. So in terms of Marketplace, you can see the pressure is on the product management, um, on the order management. Product management, um, product information is, is typically one of the hardest challenges facing any retailers as they move from one, one channel to, to multi-channel. And it's challenging enough to deal you know, with, with your own data. Imagining now having to induct product information for multiple merchants, multiple retailers, um, that you know, typically the, the only common thing between all these data sources is, is just poor quality. So this is, a, this is a difficult problem because if you about these things is very much um, catalog based, that would be too rigid. So you need a way to be able to flex the product information across channels. Um, order management is becoming more and more difficult. Uh, you know, the phrase, oh, you know, we, we, we used to refer to this as OMS, order management systems. Now we started to refer to DOM, distributed order management. Um, take uh, Chinese market, for example. You cannot survive just by direct, you know, without having an offering that will also maximize combination of your direct and Tmall, then you will, you will lose, uh, you, you know, you miss a massive opportunity. So, you know, some of these um, business models um, would, would exert more pressure. Um, Steve, do you want to talk about Flash? Uh, yeah, I can a little bit. I, mean, I, just, I was going to add something on, um, on product management, actually. Um, so so w we live and breathe this uh, every day, which is 
when you're dealing with businesses uh, like eBay or Amazon, they have their own hierarchy. So just something as simple as, as mapping your hierarchies onto someone else's hierarchies is a massive task. And, and if you extend that out then into, uh, into sort of an international um, uh, arena, when I was at uh, M&M Direct, we, we had Amazon and eBay going in multiple countries. So you're talking multiple countries, multiple hierarchies, because at the time those guys didn't have their act together and have one hierarchy across all of their countries, which is incredible for organizations of that size. So without having a, a proper um, product information uh, management sort of tool to enable you to do that across multiple territories and multiple channels, it, it just was a massive, it would have been a massive um, uh, zap of resource from the organization. Um, in terms of flash sale, um, w one of the things that we do and, and live and breathe again every day is we, we launch about uh, 20,000 new products onto our website every week, um, which is how you get to 350,000 in, in a 12-month period. So, so, so we, we are at the absolute extremes of having to uh, bring data and images and product information into the organization, enriching it, uh, and then actually that sort of, unless we run the promotion again, that, that data disappears uh, five days later, and, uh, and, and all of that investment that you've made c c could be lost. So you have to find the cheapest and most effective way of doing that. Um, and, and again, you know, we've, we've chosen um, the Ivis Seneto product to help us do that because it's right at the heart of our business. Okay, moving next to the um, assessing the readiness of the organization. So we put the main five departments in the customer journey. IT systems, merchandise, supply chain, and customer service. And again, from a B to C, you know, all one, one diamond just, f um, just for reference. And um, as you go through these seven business models, there will be additional impact or additional stress on some of these departments. Um, so marketplace, there will be more emphasis on IT, impact on supply chain, uh, flash sell, Steve talked about, the ch um, in, in inducting such a large number of um, products and creating their promotions, but the other thing is um, it, it's all happening in a very short period of time. So uh, just basically being aware of as you introduce these business models, the need to um, uh, the capabilities, readiness of the organization or that you can scale up to these business models would be absolutely essential. Steve, do you want to comment on this? Uh, not much to add there, really. Okay. No. Um, so we want to talk about the how, um, i.e., how do you actually make all this happen? Um, what we've done um, is we, we put together a framework. Um, this framework is, is, is based on five steps, five stages. Um, alignment, customer centricity, um, collaboration, and innovation. So these five stages or five steps, if you like, is what, in our opinion, uh, represents the key things. So these um, will be the five key areas that, in our view, represents um, a framework for retailers to, to step up um, into multi-channels. And this is capturing 20 years experience in, in multi-channels.